Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, World Kangaroo Day Let's Get Planning webinar. So thank you so much for coming tonight. And uh, tonight we acknowledge and pay respect to the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation on whose country we're broadcasting from this evening. One of the highlights for World Kangaroo Day 2021 was working with Uncle Max and the Ewan Nation who created the very first Kangaroo Declaration. That was a historic moment in time as First Nations people expressed their deep relationship with the kangaroo in such a formal document. We'd like to honour Uncle Max tonight who passed away in December. He's greatly missed. And I'd like to take this opportunity to read an extract from this UN declaration. Kangaroos are intelligent, sentient beings, living in family groups and have their own song lines, language, culture, and dreaming. As they traverse their own dreaming tracks, they continue to activate the Earth's song lines for the survival of all living things. We declare kangaroos have the right to live in safety, roam freely, and travel uninterrupted through their ancient song lines. The UN Declaration can be found on our website if you are interested in seeing more about that. So welcome everyone. I'm Kate Clare and I'm one of the co-directors of Kangaroos Alive. And tonight we're joined by a stellar team of kangaroo enthusiasts who have helped initiate some great ideas for World Kangaroo Day 2022. This year's theme is caring for country, caring for kangaroos. Uh, some of you might not know our story. In 2012, together with my co-director, Mick McIntyre, we started researching for an upcoming movie that we thought would be an interesting invest investigative documentary into the love-hate relationship Australians have with their kangaroos. It was our first interview with an Australian uh, New South Wales scientist that we learnt that kangaroos are the victims of the largest land-based wildlife slaughter on the planet. We were shocked and disgusted by that and so many things we learned and were also inspired by meeting people who are fighting for kangaroos across Australia. This award-winning movie, Kangaroo Love Hate Story, was released in 2018 and after the film had been released worldwide, we were compelled to keep fighting for kangaroos and we created Kangaroos Alive, a global movement for the ethical treatment of kangaroos. One of the gaps we felt within Australia was a national lack of celebration for kangaroos. While we love the emblem on all sports teams and companies, we felt there was little recognition of the special places that these magnificent wildlife held in our day-to-day -day lives, communities and countries. So in 2020, we initiated World Kangaroo Day, October 24th. So last year on World Kangaroo Day, some of you might not know this, and if you've got comments and hi and let us know where you come from and chat to us on uh, whether you're on Facebook Live or you, uh, YouTube Live and we'll get back to you and um, let us know where you're from. So last year, um, you might not have caught up with this, but we got uh, 268 mainstream media stories running reaching an estimated audience of 86 million people. The UN community held a World Kangaroo Day ceremony unveiling a UN Kangaroo Declaration that was presented to the New South Wales Parliament. We had an amazing response with over 800 entries in the World Kangaroo Day photo competition with 37,000 people looking at the photos. So if you had your photos in there, hi Christine, if you had your photos in there, um, that's where they, that's how many people looked at them, 37,000. Several groups in Europe launched a new part, uh, launched a new campaign, Stop the EU Kangaroo Trade. And many people across Australia held protests, painted murals, had local stalls, radio shows, and film screenings. So it was an amazing, amazing day. But some people let us know that they didn't have enough time to plan World Kangaroo Day in their communities. So this year, here we all are with three months, nearly three months to go to plan 
and make and have ideas and to share our resources getting ready for World Kangaroo Day 2022. So uh, welcome and we hope that you're getting ready and you're interested and you are going to be join us and make it all happen. Hi Queenie. So Kangaroos Alive have created a World Kangaroo Day website and have prepared some ideas to help kick off World Kangaroo Day for 2022. We'll have our kick-ass PR team on board again in October and they'll promote our event calendar and get some positive stories into the mainstream media about kangaroos. Um, first off, I'm going to hand over to Kelda Davey. She's the World Kangaroo Project Manager from Kangaroos Alive, and she's going to show us through the World Kangaroo Day site and share some ideas that you're invited to utilise, adapt, and implement into your community. So uh, welcome, Kelda. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm just going to show you my screen so you can have a look at the newly launched World Kangaroo Day um, website. First off, we have the photo competition that everybody loves. Um, and this year we've added a special category for kangaroos in care, just for wildlife carers. Um, I really suggest everyone clicks through and has a look at the um, photographs from 2021 because there's some beautiful photographs from last year's competition and have a look at Steve Parrish's video of his uh, and winner announcement video because he gives great tips on taking on wildlife photography. Um, and keep make sure you follow us on Instagram because you'll see all the photos on Instagram. And if you're not a photographer yourself, you still get the chance to vote on your favourite photograph entered. Um, there's also the youth category again, and we have the amazing judges of Steve Parrish and Robert Irwin. Then, um, I'm very excited about this next initiative, Kangaroo Walks and Talks. Um, Mick from Kangaroos Alive was very involved with whale watching and he set up whale watching walk, well, talk kits. So we've sort of based it on that uh, and we're very lucky to also have Craig who's already doing walks and talks down in the Mornington Peninsula and he's gonna to talk to you a bit more about his experience in giving kangaroo talks. Um, it's still in the making process. We have the wonderful Mike Fury helping write and do his magic. And it, it will be so basic that anybody can give the talk in their community. We really think this is a way to connect locals with kangaroos and a build, be, build an appreciation of what they have in their area. And we've sort of just been talking to the some people in Canberra who are very interested in doing walks and talks there. Um, then we move on to the rescue kits. Um, this is a, another how-to thing that you can do. Um, I think it'd be great for groups like scouting groups to on World Kangaroo Day to make up kits and get them into cars in their community. We can or you could have a morning tea at your local community centre. Um, then we've got the events page. Now, in October, we'll have a fabulous PR team on board again. But this is where you can put in your own events or um, there's a form to fill out or you can just email me all the details and we'll get it up there but the PR team will refer journalists to this page. Um, and it's also, we can share this page on all the digital, on all the World Kangaroo digital media channels. So if you, you can get some ideas of events that people held last year and put in your own and we'll help you promote it. Then we have the, 
10 things you can do on World Kangaroo Days, get your creative mind going to get some ideas of what you'd like to do. You could share it with some friends and um, get planning something together. Uh, we also have a shout out from World Kangaroo Day Ambassadors. We have our first one and you'll see that at the end of today's webinar. We also have a kangaroo activity book and this is something I'd love everyone to help us with now. So it's based off the um, one that came with the whale walks and talks kit but this this is a great, so, which, um, so this is something that schools will be able to download and give out to students as an activity to do on World Kangaroo Day. You might want to give it, uh, print it out and give it to your own children on a long trip or a rainy day. Um, but here's some of the a few examples here is a word find, so which way is the camera going, and, um, or, um, you could do a crossword, there's dot to dots, um, lots of ideas in here. So we'd love to see what you could come up with. Uh, we've already had a beautiful cover designed by Howie Cook. Isn't that gorgeous? Um, and we've also had Trace Haller to do some designs. So you, there's going to be a little flip book on the bottom of every corner with a kangaroo jumping along. Um, so that'd be fabulous if everyone can start helping us and submit pages to get that together so it can be ready to be downloaded on World Kangaroo Day. And um, what makes World Kangaroo Day fabulous is that everyone comes together and with so much going on, we bring the attention to kangaroos right around the world. Um, so I'll, we'll cross over to Craig, who will give you a bit more information about the success he's having with Walks and Talks. Thanks so much, Kelda. That's great. I'm just going to add Craig. I'll get rid of a few things. Uh, Kelda and Craig. Hi, Craig. How are you? I'm good, Kate. How are you? Oh, but thanks so much for joining us tonight. Um, for those of you who don't know, Craig is um, talking to us from Rye. He's, uh, he already is doing um, kangaroo walks and talks down there. So he's helping Kangaroos Live in Kelda build the resources that you're going to use, as um, Kelda mentioned. So what are some of the benefits, do you think, Craig, of doing the walks and talks in your community? Uh, well, we've got this mob that's been locked up um, down in Cape Shank, um, 600 kangaroos. Um, and there's been a very public kind of debate about it, and a lot of people have been writing in with all these different attitudes and opinions about kangaroos. So we thought to give people a better understanding, what better way than actually to get them out in the field and into our local park system so they can actually um, come along and sit down and watch the kangaroos behave themselves naturally and start to get rid of a lot of these misconceptions that people have about kangaroos. Yeah, yeah. And uh, can you tell us, was it like, has it been successful if people wanted it? Uh, yeah, we've been running it since January. We've started off um, first thing in the mornings and last month we actually kind of switched it around um, to the evenings or late afternoon um, and we actually found that to be more popular than the morning so far. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's, um, it was really, really um, inspiring to see so many people come out on our first um, evening walk. Right, and what, what are some of their responses? How are they responding, like, when they're out there and... You know, are they learning about kangaroos for the first time, or what? What? How are they um, letting you know how they feel? Um, a, a lot of people have been telling us um, at the end of the day, um, and when we're out there, we've watched people actually kind of start to impersonate some of the kangaroos and some of the activities that they've been doing. We had this um, big male kind of um, stroking 
a, a another female's face and then he started stroking her tail so we had a couple of the participants starting doing that to each other stroking faces that kind of stuff um yeah which was really kind of fun to see and of course yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. um a few small children come out and you know they get really really excited just seeing kangaroos in the wild yeah 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 and do they keep their sort of a hundred meter type distance. They always they always know exactly where you are, don't they? They do. They these ones. I think they're very used to people. Um, so a lot of people get very close to them all the time. So they're quite used to people. But we try to keep our distance. Um, you know, not to scare them away. And that's one of the things I think when people go out with walks, um is not to kind of approach a kangaroo's fast and keep your distance. Also, you know, keep um the noise to a minimum so you don't scare them off as you're approaching them. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that, of course, I mean, there's benefits both for you and the kangaroos, obviously, there, that the kangaroos stay and you get to watch them. <laughs> both, yeah. Both things are good. And, and you're uh, saying you do that just at a local reserve in your area? Uh, yeah, so we've got a couple of um, different reserves. Uh, we've been going down to Highfield National Park, um, some of the first ones, and, and Greens Bush, which is a broader national park. Uh, but more recently, we've been doing a lot of our um, walks and talks down around Arthur's Seat, which is in Arthur's Seat State Park, um, which also has a magnificent um, bay view right across to the city of Melbourne, um, which just kind of adds, you know, to... To the whole show i guess but more than anything yeah. else the kangaroos really are the the show you know we go out there we we talk about them we talk about the different threats that they might um pose we we engage others to kind of you know talk to us well what are some of the things that you hear about kangaroos um and we always usually get um good feedback with that and it's the same kind of thing you know that they're pests that there's too many that kind of stuff so then we'll start to try and debunk those kind of opinions or, or myths that, that they've heard about. Yeah, yeah. All right, so would you recommend other people do it? Have you found it beneficial? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, going out there, seeing people get um, really, really up close and personal with kangaroos while they're um, wild and actually enjoying themselves. Um, and... and you know, they're really good ambassadors and to go off and talk to other people about what they've experienced and try and get other people to go out and come along. You know, I guess that's why we've been able to con keep doing what we've been doing is because the people who have come along have liked what they've seen and they've told their friends as well. Yeah. Well, I guess that's, you know, Australia um, became from a whaling nation to a whale-watching nation and... You know, as we got to know the migratory whales, the humpback whales that are on most of people's um, posts, um, we got to love them and uh, we learned to look after them and, you know, respect them. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, we thought it would be a really great initiative. We were surprised when we were making Kangaroo the movie that there was not enough tourism around Australia and they weren't valued alive. And it was such a weird idea not to see any kangaroo watching offered to the millions of guests and the sort of, I think we make $62 billion a year in tourism money, and to not have kangaroo watching just seems crazy. Yeah, it, it does seem crazy to me. Like, I mean, you look at Australia, I think wildlife is in one of, what, the top three, top five kind of tourism revenues to australia so yeah it is crazy that that we're not getting people to come out and actually watch kangaroos you know they're such charismatic um animals you know especially the family you know mentality the way that they look up um, after each other the way they interact with each other yeah they really are the uh, stars of the show they are really really fun to watch oh hey well thanks so much and, and craig and calder and mike fury and others are really creating some fantastic resources for anyone who wants to use them. You can take them, you know, 100% use them or you can um, change them for your area, make them work for you however you want, and they're going to be a free resource available on the World Kangaroo Day website. So thanks so much, Craig. It was great to have your um, story and hear what's happening uh, down and Rye thanks. with the kangaroos. That's fantastic. Um, so... Uh,
it was great to hear about that. I'm just on the next, uh, one of the other things that Kelda was talking about on the website is um, the, we've created and helped create with a team, uh, a kangaroo road rescue pack. Um, Greg Keatley, who's an amazing uh, road rescuer that many of you know, who rescues kangaroos, has just fallen off the site. So, um, so we're talking, uh, Ah, uh, the sleet up where he lives. <laughs> yeah, so he's dropped up because of the weather. So he's dropped up because of the weather. So I, I'll tell you a little bit about it because I've been working on it as well. Um, so one of the things that many people around Australia don't do is plan to stop for kangaroos when they're um, driving. So we want to help people, and I know many of you out there have been already setting this up in your communities, and we think Wild well, Kangaroo Day is a really great focus for that. And we want you to, um, if it's something that would work in your community, to get together and build um, what, what, uh, kangaroo rescue kits, particularly for the joeys that are left alive uh, inside perhaps their mothers that have been killed on the side of the street. When you go to the website, you'll get a whole sense of what to do. Um, yeah, thanks, Kim. What you can do, this is what we've, we are creating. It's a very simple kit, a um, ribbon to tie around the kangaroo so to let other people know you've stopped and so not everyone has to stop, and a uh, couple of pillowcases to have in your car. And we've got together a, um, a book of instructions, I mean a list of instructions for you, and just to help you have in your car so you know what to do when you're driving along. So I know many of you know what to do, but I think your community stone, I just wanted to share with you something that the um, team from Red Box down in Melbourne, Nikki and Monica and um, them have been doing, uh, they got a grant from their Bendigo Bank. And uh, when they came out to see the education um, center that, uh, that Nikki and Scott had put up, they were so impressed. And I'm just gonna read out what they said. We were so impressed that we asked if there was anything else we could do, particularly for the local kangaroo mob. And it was at that point we agreed to stop the fantastic wildlife rescue packs that the Red Box Wildlife Centre volunteers put together. And we promoted the packs. This is the bank, their local bank. They promoted the pack on our social media and the first 20 packs ran out the door. We got a top up of around 20 more and the same thing happened. At this stage, one of the community newspapers wrote a story about the packs and how they all put together and what they include and another bag full. This time about 50 were delivered to the branches and within three weeks they were all depleted again. And we had have had social media direct messages asking about whether they could be posted to places like Queensland. And the um, bank says, these packs are clearly wanted by the public. They provide a very simple way for people to, more, to feel more confident, confident about checking for injured wildlife, contacting rescuers or support people, and caring for injured animals in the short term if required. As World Kangaroo Day approaches, we are happy to continue being a distribution point to help get these packs into the community where they are needed. So uh, we just wanted to, I know some of you are already doing this, but we want to really not only be doing this as the team that are listening tonight, but really supporting Australians to care for country and care for kangaroos. Once again, like the walks and talks, things will be provided on the World Kangaroo Day website for you. You can, you know, have a pack making workshop at your local school. Everyone can um, donate um, pillowcases, get some ribbons, um, download the uh, information and just start letting people know that this is our responsibility. The injured wildlife on the side of the street is our responsibility. On our website, um, Greg Keatley and um, Pam Turner are both demonstrating in a short video about how they check the pouches to check if there's any uh, injured wildlife. So, uh, and of course, ring your local wildlife rescue. That's the key thing to remember is ring your local wildlife rescue people if you find um, injured wildlife on the street and they'll help you. Um, but I know that Nikki and Monica and the team at Redbox um, have got heaps of ideas. So if you want to uh, get involved in your community and do something like that for World Kangaroo Day, that would be fantastic. So 
uh, that's the spiel on Dog Kangaroo Day. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so I'd just like to welcome Mick McIntyre. Now, one of the things that, uh, as the co-director of Kangaroos Alive, one of the things that Kangaroos Alive has <coughs> been doing in the last uh, five years is working in Europe. And I'm just going to welcome Mick to talk a bit more about what's going on in Europe and World Kangaroo Day. Hi, Mick. Hi. Hi. Thanks, Kate. Um, and hi, everybody. Thanks for thanks for um, joining in. Um, just uh, I'll just ask. Things. Um, yeah, look, it's extraordinary uh, how far World Kangaroo Day has come since <laughs> everything starts with an idea, right? Um, and uh, it's so magnificent. I the, just looking at the new website that was launched today. Um, great work, Kilda, and and uh, it's it's you know it's such a yeah. It's it it was always our intention to be able to celebrate kangaroos and because making the film, we obviously spent a lot of time talking about the harsh treatment and the horrible slaughter that was going on. So it, it, World Kangaroo Day is all about celebrating kangaroos. So, um, yeah, and it, it's fantastic to see what what is going on this year. Um, and in particular, you know, this notion of taking people out to see kangaroos, it's, you know, I my my personal experience was... I remember when people laughed at the early fishermen when they took whales out to see whales and they were actually telling people that they were charging people to see whales and people laughed at them. Um, and now, as as we know, uh, whale watching is worth hundreds of millions of dollars to the Australian economy. And, yeah, it, it's, part of, it's part of this shift, um, you know, that we can dream of, this shift of perception that kangaroos are worth more alive than they are dead. Um, and so, yeah, thanks, Craig. Um, Greg and I were down with Craig doing a screening of the film a, a, a month or so ago, and it's uh, it's fantastic to see the mob of Eastern Greys down there on the Mornington Peninsula, and they really are a, an example of, of what can be done to, um, to, you know, to see kangaroos in the wild. So thanks, guys. Um, my role in the webinar tonight is to talk about Europe. So what happens with the film is uh, the film, as most of you know, probably know, we were invited to screen the film in the European Parliament in Brussels. And from that screening, uh, the impact was immediate. Uh, we had um, members of the European Parliament shocked and appalled uh at what was going on here in australia no surprise but it was great that that, that was their reaction and in the three years since um we've been working with these members of the european parliament and met, uh, working with a, a consortium of of ngos in europe to basically uh bring about a, a a ban of kangaroo meat and skins into the eu and the update the reason i'm talking about it on this webinar is that uh Kate and I have actually been uh, invited to be in Europe for World Kangaroo Day this year um, because we're hoping that there's going to be some significant uh, developments in the campaign. So we're going to be in Brussels. We're going to be at the EU for World Kangaroo Day this year. Um, I'm not going to say too much more, uh, but to say that the campaign is progressing well and we... Um, yeah, we're confident that we will get a, 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 an EU ban of kangaroo imports. It's just taking, obviously, longer than we want uh, because we're well aware that kangaroos are getting bashed and killed every night. But, um, but yeah, with the support of a lot of people, we are working to uh, help with that ban. Just so you know, we need, uh, we need a simple majority of MEPs, members of the European Parliament, and... Uh, so far, we've got over 100 uh, members of the European Parliament um, signing on to this, this idea. There's a lot of hoops uh, that we need to jump through. Oh, there was a pun. We need to hop through um, to get this, to get a simple majority of the 700 MEPs. But yeah, look, we've got to believe that we'll get there. And uh, so on World Kangaroo Day, we will be reporting live from the EU Parliament in Brussels. And... Um, so stay tuned, stay, uh, stay tuned to the World Kangaroo Day social, the website to find out more. But yeah, look, we're really, really 
um, pleased and 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 thankful to the support we're getting in Europe because, as I said, they are shocked. And and look, the chain, you know, it it is extraordinary to uh, think what we're doing to our kangaroos, and they they get it. They look from afar, and they know that it's barbaric, and they want to stop this uh, um, barbaric cruelty. So that's it from me. Um, as I say, we'll be reporting live from the EU in Brussels. So, yeah, very excited on what that might look like. And, yeah, we'll let you know when we talk to you on World Kangaroo Day. Thanks, Kate. Oh, thanks, Mick. Yeah, so uh, uh, someone, Glenn's just saying, I'll be in Egypt on October 24th. Maybe I could be at Cairo Zoo and do a live chat with Zookeeper and ask them what do they think of how Australia treats its kangaroos. Yeah, Glenn, I think you'll have to tell them. I mean, what we found with the film was that so few people actually almost believed us overseas that we treat kangaroos like that. They so think that we hold them up as this great emblem and uh, they they never, they're so shocked as they should be uh, the way we actually treat them and, and what happens here in Australia. So, yeah, I mean, telling overseas people is really key to letting I mean, and Australians, there's so many Australians that don't know as well. Um, World Kangaroo Day it can, uh, is whatever you want to be in your community, whatever you think works. Last year, people held protests in their community. They held stalls um, to tell people about what's going on. And it is a day of celebration, but obviously everyone has got a different relationship with their community and the kangaroos and their town. And I think it's best for if everyone just is doing what they think they need to do in their community. And, you know, uh, last year uh, there was a radio. They encouraged their local radio to get a couple of kangaroo experts to have a chat with their uh, announcer about um, kangaroos. Uh, so you can get a scientist or a couple of local people to talk um, who know something about kangaroos. You can... Um, visit a school and encourage students. Um, as Kelda said, there's a study guide. You can encourage teachers to do something with kangaroos. They can do something with the activity book. You can all get around and make kits. I know that there's many of you have got wildlife carers in your community, so you could host a dinner to raise funds for them and uh, celebrate the work that they do to really look after kangaroos in your town. I mean, basically anything that's you know, highlights and spot, um, no, don't use that word, puts the focus on kangaroos in your town would be fantastic and the kangaroos in Australia. I know that many of you entered um, the photo competition, really encouraged you to do that again this year. But uh, we've got some time now to uh, for anyone to have uh, let us know what they're doing. We really hope that you can that we can share ideas. Um, we're really happy to share all our resources. And if anyone else has got ideas and resources or is making art or um, wants to chat about what they're doing and share that, it would be really great because I think it will inspire us all to do something different and to, um, to talk and to talk with each other and really um, embolden each other or inspire each other to do something great. Um, what else? So, look, if you have any ideas uh, or questions uh, that you want to write down, if if you want to get in touch with Calder, do you want to, oh, yeah, she's just done that, um, inf info at Kangaroos Alive, uh, and she will get back to you with, uh, support you in any way she can. Um, so just if anyone, we'll just leave it a little bit of time if anyone's got any questions they want to ask or any ideas. Um, the World Kangaroo Day Facebook page um, and Instagram will be places for you to chat to. Um, if you just want to chat to everybody, feel free to jump on and post something about what you're doing. Um, and Louise Ward is just trying to get on from the AJP. She wanted to share um, what she's doing. So uh, we'll give her a few minutes to get on. Um, while we're waiting for her, I just wanted to show you something cute that just came in today. We're very honoured again in 2022 to have the great cricket legend Dizzy Gillespie once again um, support uh, Kangaroos Alive, uh, Wild Kangaroo Day. I'm just going to find that as our ambassador. I'm just going to play that for you. Um, G'day, I'm Jason Gillespie. 
I'm proud to be the ambassador again for World Kangaroo Day. Join us on October 24, 2022. I can't wait to celebrate our iconic kangaroos on this important day. Check out worldkangarooday.org to see the many ways you can participate. There is a photo competition, kangaroo watching tours, webinars, film screenings and much, much more. Join us on October 24 for World Kangaroo Day. Many thanks. Great. So thanks, Dizzy. That's brilliant. We're really pleased about that. Um, look, I don't think we'll wait for Louise to um, find her computer working. Sorry that she sends her apologies. Um, I know that she, last year, the Animal Justice Party in New South Wales um, held um, vigils and protests all over the state. They got special core fruits made for that day and they really um, wanted to, uh, here's Louise, I'm going to get her on to tell you about it. Yeah, thanks, Christine. Louise, I'm just going to throw you straight in to talk about, <laughs> welcome, so nice to see you. You too. We've been just telling everyone about the different things that they can possibly do for World Kangaroo Day and all the things our website's just gone live. And um, I just wanted to invite you to share with us about any thoughts you had for Animal Justice Party, thoughts that you had for World Kangaroo Day or anything that you might have been planning. Thanks, Kate. And yeah, we're really excited to participate in World Kangaroo Day again this year. It's such a positive thing for kangaroos and for all of us kangaroo advocates to get out and do something really positive. So what the Animal Justice Party is planning on doing is trying to put some pressure on our state MPs in the lead up, especially to the state election next year. Um, in New South Wales, we are obviously signing off on massive commercial slaughter of kangaroos and state MPs are completely ignoring this and um, we really want to get local people within electorates to go to their MPs office and tell them that they want kangaroos protected from the commercial industry and from the non-commercial industry as well and from development and yeah just kind of really put kangaroos on the map for local MPs. In particular, we want to have a big, um, I guess, display of force at the Environment Minister's office in New South Wales, and that's James Griffin. Um, he signs off on the commercial kangaroo plan. Um, so yeah, so for in New South Wales, the um, Animal Justice Party will be sending out communications of how you can get involved um, with each of these actions and we'll also we have a national kangaroo working group within the Animal Justice Party. So we hope to have some similar actions um, in Victoria. Our Queensland Animal Justice Party group has been really active getting out and protesting um, against Nike's use of kangaroos. So we hope to have activities in each state. Um, so yeah, I guess keep an eye out on our social media we'll put all the events up on the website and um yeah also be sending out emails etc so i don't know if i've got much more to say than that uh, that's great louise thanks so much and i know that uh you guys are sharing across the nation it's great to have more and more states involved i think that pressure on the environment minister is key um both federally and state-wise. There seems to be, as we recognised with the New South Wales inquiry last year, that there's loopholes between the state and federal that allow for um, the terrible uh, treatment of kangaroos. So the more we can pressure both state and federal. Yeah, and in particular, we, you know, in the New South Wales kangaroo inquiry had um, over 24 recommendations, I think, and it went to the Environment Minister, James Griffin, who completely ignored the recommendations of that inquiry. And there's been no ramifications for him. There's, you know, the, the media haven't really covered it and people in his own electorate don't know about it. I mean, he lives in the electorate of Manly, which has a, you know, population of people that love wildlife and, you know, want to protect the natural environment. So I think, um, you know, highlighting this with a, like a 
you know, just an event at his office. And I think it'd be a great way to get local media involved as well and really, you know, get the message out there to the wider public. I know, Kate, you were at our most recent Nike protest where we handed out uh, um, over 500 flyers and the amount of, you know, conversations were had where people had no idea that this is happening to kangaroos. So every time we can get out into the public domain and tell people what's really happening is Yeah, so um, the World Kangaroo Day this year falls on a Monday. The 24th of October is a Monday. So that would be a fantastic thing if you plan something in your communities on a Monday morning. That's why you can go to the minister's office or plan something to do in a community space that's busy, you know, but being at outside, uh, doing a protest outside your parliamentary office, I think is a great idea. And also um, we felt that if you wanted to do walks and sports and things on the Sunday and make it a sort of World Kangaroo Day weekend, you know, have workshops on Saturday, you know, just talk about kangaroos. As we said, there's just so little people know. And I know that you all listening tonight are already knowing these things, but let's just keep remembering that so many of our community need to A, learn to love and get to know and be educated about the magnificence of kangaroos, but also what the terrible things are that's happening to them. So while we promote the day with a lot of sort of positive, let's look after caring for country, caring for kangaroos, let's also let people know that you know, it's really, t the time is now and we've got a new government federally to really push for a change. We've been doing this for long enough. We've got state elections coming up and we just, we've been pushing for this for so long. And we had uh, the other government, the last government was in for eight years and they, and they cared, they never cared about anything basically to do with, as you've seen with the environment report, but for the kangaroos particularly. So um, we, we feel it's really time to, uh, pressure these new governments and uh, in the state elections to really pressure for change for the kangaroos. So thanks so much for jumping on, Louise, and uh, we look forward thanks, to more Kate. things on World Kangaroo Day. Um, and I was just quickly, oh, sorry, Kate, I was just quickly going to say, I know you guys are doing a really great job and other people are doing a lot of work on putting kind of toolkits together because I think a lot of people, you know, want to do something, but they need like more of the how-to. So we'll do the same thing for if you want to go to your MP's office and we'll produce resources and maybe even like run a workshop or something like that to make sure people, you know, feel confident to do that. That's fantastic. Yeah. So we've got the um, walks and talks um, RIT kit and the um, uh, road rescue kit. And yeah, so we're doing, we're going to put as many resources as we can on our website. We'll put a link to that, on, to link to that, what you're doing on your website so that we can, so people can really, you, know, you don't have to start from scratch and that's what we're really encouraging people to start the conversations now in their community so that we really have an amazing day and remember that our kick-ass PR company will find what you're doing if you have it up on the website and and you know talk about that across the uh, across the country um so thanks so much Louise I'll sign thank off thank you so much and, uh, cool thanks so thanks everyone so much for coming this um Broadcast will stay on the Kangaroos Alive World Kangaroo Day our website and the Kangaroos Alive uh, YouTube page. So if you can share that to all your different groups tomorrow and they can come on and catch up with all the different um, activities that we're planning and we want you to be planning. So thank you so much to Craig Thompson, uh, Louise, Calder, Mick, and all of you for joining tonight. We hope you have a great night enjoy snuggling up in the winter and uh, uh, look forward to hearing from you in the next three months so we can plan the best ever of Kangaroo Day, October 24th. So bye everyone. See you next time. Cheers. <laughs>